Good evening. Welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board regular business meeting on Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. Would you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one on the agenda. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none. Moving on to item number two. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the school board minutes as listed out in our agenda packet. I second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven. Item number three, we have Good Scout, the graduate, Montana, here to <laughs> update us. Thank you. All right, so I've been out of school for a little bit, so excuse me if I do not touch on exactly everything that's happened in the past month and a half. So first and foremost, um, seniors returned from their student transition projects and presented um, what they did. I know some people... Um, did SDPs such as with the WNBA the, in the Chicago Sky, and then some went to hospitals, others actually went abroad. Natalie went to Europe for a little bit. And so we had a wide range of different ST pre STP presentations, and basically everyone just covered what they did over the couple of weeks. Um, the Little Mermaid um, was a huge success at the high school. Uh, I loved it. I went, and the sets were exquisite, and the all of the music was fantastic, and so for those of you who saw it, I'm sure you all enjoyed it as well. We also had some all-state musicians. I see some of them in the crowd here. Um, Will Seidel, Kate Hansen, Natalie Gale, and Blair Carpenter, and Kitty Oberholzer were all recognized. Uh, Mock Trial took 20th place at Nationals, and Matthew Fishbein also won the Chess Championship. In addition to um, all of the students garnering those awards, we also had our last official school day for everyone, so summer's right around the corner. I bet a bunch of students are getting restless, and so um, finals start up next week, and then after finals, everyone lets out for the summer. So, about it. Thank and you. And of course, graduation, but. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, comments from the public on agenda items. Seeing none, moving on to item number five, communications. We have Pond Cove principals of the day, Nathan Hanisco and Brady Hanisco. Come on up to the podium. Good evening, members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. My name is Nathan Hanisco, and I am the Pond Cove Principal for the day. I want to in a raffle at Bingo Night. My name is Brady Hanisco, and I am the Pond Cove Assistant Principal for the day. I want it because the principal is my twin brother. <laughs> We want to report about our day to you so you know what it's like to run Ponco School. First, we greeted kids and did the morning announcements over the intercom. We read the lunch menu, announced birthdays, and announced what our special rules were for the day. These are our rules. Kids and staff could chew gum but not on the bus, and no snapping it in class. We all chewed a lot of gum today. <laughs> <laughs> Kids could wear their favorite sports team caps. We saw lots of different team caps being worn today. 
Kids could wear sunglasses, but it was sunny out, so it was great, and we saw lots of funny sunglasses. Kids could earn extra recess time this week if their teachers thought they earned it today. Kids could bring one favorite stuffed animal to school today as long as it fit in their backpacks. We helped Mr. Shields run gym class for part of the day so he got to relax. <laughs> we got to go to Sea Salt with Miss Hassan for lunch. I got a tuna sandwich, Brady got a BLT, and Miss Hassan got a lobster roll. <laughs> When we got there, they had our table re already set up for us. For dessert, we both had a big piece of carrot cake, and Miss Hassan had a strawberry rhubarb thing. <laughs> <laughs> when we got back to school, we did lunch duty in the cafeteria. It was pretty loud and kids were so excited to see us in charge. We felt like celebrities. <laughs> Miss Hassan took pictures of us on lunch duty and we tweeted it on Twitter. <laughs> we went to recess with the third graders grades today because playing outside should be an important part of everyone's work day. Then we visited kindergarten, first and second grade classes to make sure kids were learning and having fun and that everyone was following our rules. We helped Mr. Shields some more in the gym with a first grade class. Our school day ended with call, by calling kids for their buses over the intercom. We had an excellent and incredible day today. <laughs> Nicely done. Was it fun? Would anybody else like to say anything? All right. President, vice president, is that next? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item 5B, legislative sentiments. Do we have Senator Millette and Representative <laughs> Monaghan? Monaghan, Derek. Derek. Here. Okay. Standing on the stool, a lot of people would be really tall. <laughs> now that I see what they were standing on, oh, impressive balancing act. So, good evening, everyone. I we appreciate very much you allowing us to come before you with these sentiments. We, as you know, from the um, last workshop, we have a bit of a backlog now that we have to make up for. And our promise to you is that we are going to be as brief as possible. Um, so on that note, we will be reading the script every single time. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so we will just get right to it. Shall mm -hmm. we? Do, you, do you want to start or do I? Uh, go ahead. I'll okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, if it's okay, perhaps what I'll do is I'll just read the first one so everyone has a sense of what a legislative sentiment sounds like, um, and then we'll just kind of ad lib for the other ones. Um, so for the first one, uh, is anyone here from the speech team, the high school speech team? Come on up, you guys. Okay. Great. A little side remark, I was just at an event in Portland and um, I, um, somebody was speaking to me as a, 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 who was judging a, a debate uh, event and said that the Cape Elizabeth debate team was incredibly um, professional and very impressive. Um, so I, my shout out to the debate team as well. But for this evening, um, we are here to recognize the high school speech team. 
I'm going to need my glasses. So be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the Cape Elizabeth High School speech team in winning the 2015 Maine Forensic... Is that right? 15? 16. It should be 16. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> we are going to get that fixed. Okay. Um, apparently, I didn't read this with my glasses on. Maine Forensic League State Speech Championship for the seventh year in a row. Members of the team are Cole Amarello, George Astor, Julian Brandmeier, Blair Carpenter, McKenna Devereaux, Matthew Fishbein, oh boy, Jahanara Friedman, that's Jana Friedman, Lauren Gray, Andrew Greer, Drew Harrington, Tony Inhorn, Bryn Kennedy, Justin King, Anya Cohan, Eva Meal, Alexandra Moulton, Isabel Robertson, Halima Shear, Jonathan Stanley, Will Steidel, Jack Stewart, Preston Stewart, Ella Strout, Ryan Wallace, and McKenna Wood. So as you can tell, it's a robust program in the high school. The coaches are Richard Mullen and Lisa Melanson. Individual award winners include Ella Strout for novice prose and storytelling, Alessandro Moulton for prose, and Anya Cohen, Isabel Robertson, Will Steidel, and Preston Stewart for ensemble. We extend to all members of the team our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forth with on behalf of the 127th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Congratulations, team and coaches. Lest this appear routine and expected, uh, we have a couple of mantras, one being giving youth voice, and I'm going to ask a couple to uh, show their voice, and the other one is that we are always a team of beginners. So we have those who rise to the top and are so-called hotshots, but we are always willing to take in the beginners and to work with them diligently. So let me give you briefly the past and the future. Will? He's the past. <laughs> Hello, I'm Will Steidel. I'm the past. Um, I was the captain this year of the speech team. Um, I've been a member for four years, and over those four years, I've competed in uh, five different uh, speech categories. Um, I've found being a part of the speech team to be incredibly beneficial because it gives me the um, courage and confidence to speak for myself, and I've seen that um, it really helps all of uh, my team members as well, and um, I think it's been uh, an amazing thing for our school, and I'm sure that it'll only continue to grow and thrive under my successor, Mr. Preston Stewart. <laughs> Yeah, hi, I'm Preston Stewart. Um, I guess I'm the future. <laughs> so, uh, speech, I've been a part of speech for two years, and as Will said, I'm um, the incoming captain. Um, I'm really excited to start working with the speech team. It's a great program um, where, as Mr. Mullen said, we take people in and we work on their public speaking skill to help them develop the confidence and uh, some technique with public speaking. Uh, these are really important skills for people to have, uh, which is why the team is still growing, and I'm excited for it to continue growing. Uh, I think the future is very bright for the speech team, and hopefully we can reel in another championship soon. So <laughs> thank you. And uh, no team of 30 students is ever done with one coach. Lisa Melanson is my assistant and my helper all along uh, in the process. Lisa, are you here? I would just say we are grateful for the continuing support of the school district and the school board uh, to pay for our buses each weekend, the early Saturday morning departures, the entry fees, and the coaches' fees. Uh, we do try to economize when we can, but we could not have this big a team if we did not have the support of our community. So thank you very much. Okay. 
So our next award, everyone, is for the uh, mock trial team, um, which has won the 2016 Maine State High School mock trial. Uh, oh, it's up and cut. Come on up, you guys. Yep. <coughs> Come on up. So just quickly to congratulate everyone here at the mock trial uh, championship, your sixth championship victory in a row, which is really spectacular. And you're representing Maine at the National High School Mock Trial Tournament. Uh, has that taken place yet? It has taken place yet. 20th. Congratulations. So um, on behalf of the 127th legislature and the state of Maine, people of the state of Maine, we would like to congratulate you. And if anybody would like to make a few comments, David, or... Sure. We also would like to thank the school board for their support our, uh, for the team over these years. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the State Bar Association has recently decided to cut funding for um, mock trial in the state. We're fairly confident that another organization or a branch of another organization will pick it up. So we're going forward planning that uh, we will compete again in, um, in a big way. We're not quite as large as the speech team, but we do have about 28 students who participate every year, some in a JV, junior varsity role, others with uh, actual performance roles. And we are very excited this year to compete at nationals again. Um, it's great fun for all the kids to interact with students from around the country, plus South Korea, Guam, and the Mar Mariana Islands. Uh, they had a lot of fun, but we came in uh, with our best placement yet, 20th place across a, a team of about 40, uh, uh, about 46, 48 teams, and that's pretty good because we are a small state, you know, from a smaller school. So, again, thank you for your support. Um, I just had to be on this side of the podium for once. Um, I, I did want to tell you a little bit about the Nationals. Uh, unlike a lot of the states, we go to the Nationals with a bunch of newbies. We had four freshmen, three sophomores, and two juniors. A lot of these other states create teams that they compete for, they're all seniors, they've been competing for four years, they're virtually professionals. They, they, they take courses in this, and they have, uh, like California's known for getting a law school to write all their directs and cross-examinations. Uh, so we, we go there, we went to Boise, Idaho, and these kids did an unbelievable job. Most of them had virtually no significant roles, were only a few significant roles. Uh, they went, um, and it was frankly a joy to watch them. They started off sort of mouse-like, uh, but by the fourth trial, they were lions. They were really awesome. We had to win the last one to get to 20th place, and they won it. And they were, I'm quite proud of all of them. Um, we have a great coaching staff. Uh, Mary Page has done it for a long time. She brings a lot of experience to it. Our, our head coach is Dick O'Meara, who's probably done it for 20 years. And we also have Jonathan Sarbeck, who's also a prosecutor and a, and a great coach. And uh, uh, we hope to continue it. Thank you. Okay, and the next legislative settlement, Katie, would you like to join us? This is in recognition for Katie, who won the Judge's Choice Award at the Berkeley College of Music High School Jazz Festival, which is no small feat for sure, for her vocal performance on The Man Who Got Away. And I don't know if I, how many of you have had the pleasure of hearing her sing. I have, and um, my husband and I keep turning to each other going, what are we going to do without Katie next year? We're going to really miss you. So we extend to Katie our congratulations and best wishes. Well done, Katie, and best of luck. So our next um, legislative sentiment is for um, the three students, Henry Abramson, Zoe Dennison, <coughs> and Trevor Oakley, fourth grade students at Pond Cove Elementary School, who won the 2016 Maine State Scholastic Team Chess Championship in the K-6 Novice section. Are they here? here? You want to come on up? No? Oh. Kelly's here. here. We Kelly, here. okay. So our congratulations to them and to the chess coaches. They're obviously it's a robust program. K-6 
congratulations. Thank you. And that was the future, and um, this is the past and the future with the high school chess team. Come on up and join us. <coughs> this legislative sentiment is in recognition of the chess team, which won the 2016, oh, thank goodness, Maine State Scholastic Team High School Chess Championship. The members of the team are Matthew Yim, Rohan Friedman, Wes Parker, Carter Brock, Matthew Fishbein, Roman Medina, Joey DeMarco, and Joshua Powers. The team's coach is Dan Fishbein, and we extend to the members of the team our congratulations and best wishes. Well done, everybody. So we have another chess-related award here to uh, Matthew Fishbein of Cape Elizabeth, who won the high school championship at the 2016 Maine State Scholastic Individual Chess Championship. This is Matthew's 10th chess title at the championships. He won his first state title as a second grader and won nine state titles in his next 10 outings. Um, and he recently won his third main ch closed chess championship, finishing, finishing with a perfect score, and he has won 33 chess tournaments and received numerous other national honors. He won his first main closed chess championship title at 13 years of age and remains the youngest winner in the tournament's 58-year history. In 2014, he was named a United States Chess Federation Ma National Master, and we extend our extreme congratulations to Matthew and best <laughs> wishes. And I had to read the whole thing because that's something. <laughs> feeling really inferior <laughs> on so many levels. Okay, our next legislative sentiment is the high school um, VEX robotics team here this evening. Come on up. Again, it, I don't think it can be said enough, the thanks to the community and to the school board for supporting all these amazing extracurricular activities and allowing these students to just shine in so many different ways. All right, so this legislative sentiment is in recognition of the Cape Elizabeth High School VEX Robotics Team, 56B, is that right? They all graduated. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay well, we'll I'm, we're glad you're here. Uh, which won the 2016 Maine State VEX Tournament with its alliance partners from Mid-Maine Technical Center and Berwick Academy. Team 56B includes Haley Fawcett, Federico Giovini, Jasper Hansel and Mac Brucker. This is the sixth time in seventh year, seven years that a Cape Elizabeth robotics team has qualified for the VEX World Championship. And we extend the members of the team and the whole program our congratulations and best wishes. Best, good luck. In our, I think, eight or nine years of program development, every year changes uh, phenomenally, and it wouldn't be able to have that program growth without the support of the community and the school. Um, and then our large team uh, splits into small teams, so we have talked a little bit about the uh, past and the future. Um, it is true our Team 56B graduated, and here is our Team 56C that did phenomenally this year in the state and won numerous awards at numerous competitions. So um, they are to be congratulated as well as uh, 56C. So. Okay, next up we have the Model UN and the United Nations delegation. Um, how about uh, some of anybody up here? Uh, Any of the students? Four, we have a lot. Four. Four. Boston Invitational. Oh, Is there a like Oh, sorry. You know what? Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go, we'll go through all three of them. Yeah. Okay. So, 
This is for the Boston Invitational Model UN uh, Conference. Um, Miles Dorrance had the best position paper. Alex Mukai was named the best delegate. Hadley Britt, Ted Hall, uh, and Kinnan McGrath all received outstanding delegate honors. And Emily Healy and Patrick McDonald receive commendations. And we extend uh, to all members of the delegation and to the coach. Cape Elizabeth High School Social Studies teacher Melissa Oliver, our congratulations and best wishes from the State of Maine Legislature. Congratulations. So if you're not aware, there is a burgeoning Model UN program here in Cape Elizabeth, and I believe it's extending down now into the middle school, which is fantastic. I'm going to combine these two because I know we got, you guys have a lot to do. Uh, the, the Dartmouth Model UN um, also, uh, team also was recognized as the outstanding delegation, which is, again, a very impressive accomplishment. Members of the delegation who received individual awards are Tori McGrath, James, Pla James Planasek, Kelvin Barber, Alex Mukai, Maddie Connolly, Maggie Gleason, Tommy Brett, and Hadley Britt. Joe Inhorn received Best Delegate Honors, <clears throat> and we uh, um, extend uh, to all members of the delegation our congratulations. And uh, there is also a Eagle MUNC wow, event at Boston College. And again, Cape Elizabeth's team was recognized as the outstanding large delegation. Members of the delegation who received individual awards are Tommy Brett, Hadley Britt, Jana Friedman, Ted Hall, Chris Coble, and Kenan McGrath. And we extend uh, to all the members of the delegation our congratulations and best wishes. So, well done, folks. <laughs> Senator Millett, uh, Representative Monaghan. Um, the Cape Elizabeth Model United Nations delegation thanks you for this. Thanks you very much for this honor. Um, as their advisor, I am most appreciative um, of your recognition of the dedication and commitment constantly exhibited by our Model UN delegates. So I thank you for that. Um, to Superintendent NATO and members of the board, um, your unfailing support of this organization is so gratifying. Um, and I thank you for your continual willingness to permit these young people to head off by bus and train, even in the snow, <laughs> bus and train and plane uh, on their journeys of diplomacy and negotiation. Um, as you heard, 2015-2016 uh, was a very successful year for Cape Munn. Uh, four conferences yielded a trove of individual awards as well as two outstanding delegations and accolades, uh, which is achieve an achievement that CAPE has never before um, earned in a single season. So we're very, very proud of that. And these kids behind me represent an even larger uh, delegation that works incredibly hard. Um, and as their advisor, I couldn't be more proud of them. Um, and if you would permit me, I would like to have two individuals who have been with me since their freshman year um, to speak briefly about their Model UN experience. So Jonna Friedman and Alex Mukai. And again, just thank you very much for this honor. I appreciate it. Hi, um, my name is Jonna Friedman. This is Alex Mukai. Um, and on behalf of myself and Alex and all our fellow Model UN student delegates, I'd like to thank you so much for our recognition this evening and your support for our group. Um, thank you, Senator Millett and Representative Monahan. Um, thank you, members of Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, Model UN has been extremely important and a positive part of our lives and the lives of the rest of the delegation um, throughout, our, uh, throughout our high school career, and we are glad that our hard work and time is recognized by the greater community. So I know you guys want to get, uh, keep this moving, so I'll try and keep this short. Um, for me, Model UN has led for me to find and refine my voice. Uh, four and a half years ago, when I walked into my first committee at UConn, my first time ever with Ms. Oliver, I was terrified to speak to a room of 12 people much less this room, and then much less the crowd at graduation. So flash forward four and a half years and 10 Model UN conferences, and I find myself now finding out that I will be chairing a conference at Brown University next year. And uh, obviously, yeah, I was successful in speaking to a crowd much larger than a room of 12. So I thank you for recognizing the importance and all the skills that this, uh, this club and an extracurricular, extracurricular rather uh, can bring. And thank you for uh, recognizing its importance. And I just have to say thank you to Ms. Oliver for one last time as I graduate and leave this town. So thank you, Ms. O. <laughs> Getting all choked up. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, yes. let's call this, them all up. Yeah, all of the okay. scholastic yeah, writing. Um, so let's call them all up. Katie Hansen, Natalie Gale, Grace Roberts, Raina Sparks, Ella Bremen, I apologize if I'm getting your names wrong, Will Steidel, Jacob Jordan, yes. Okay, if you're here, please join us. I know there's a rather large pre-calc class meeting this evening, which probably is keeping some of these folks, I know at least one of them from being here. Come on, don't be shy. Okay. So we'll just, Kate, Katie Hansen? Come on over here, Katie. So this is uh, to honor Katie Hansen's 2016 Scholastic Writing Award Silver Key in the Flash Fiction category for Horror Story, Isabella's Tree. So congratulations, Katie. And I know Natalie very well, and she is here. So Natalie, come on up. Again, we have amazing uh, English instruction and writing programs, and this is uh, one of those benefits. Is Natalie has won the 2016 Scholastic Writing Award Silver Key in the Critical Essay category for her essay, Police Body Cameras, Implementation and Effectiveness. And we extend to Natalie our congratulations and best wishes. Okay. Uh, Will, I'll find you. Here you are. Great. <clears throat> Will, when I think about everything that has been um, done in honoring you, I get absolutely exhausted thinking about it. <laughs> You're an impressive individual. So, Will... Uh, you have been, you won the 2016 Scholastic Writing Award Silver Key in the Critical Essay category for his essay, How to Shoot Down the NRA. Oh, that's a timely topic. <laughs> we extend to William our congratulations and best wishes, and please forward me your essay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have some students who are not here this evening. I'm going to just leave them to the side, and uh, hopefully you folks can make sure they get to where they need to go. Um, Superintendent Nadeau, this is, I believe, your last business meeting, and I just, um, I think we both want to thank you for your service to our community and your leadership. We wish you all the best as you go forward. Um, our education surely is going to be all the better for your commitment and passion to students in education. Um, so best wishes. Best of luck to you. Yeah. And uh, I think we have taken up all of your time. Oh, Montana. I mean, By the way, there are finals tomorrow. That's how out of the loop you are now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living the pain. <laughs> Thanks, right, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. I would just like to add something in really quickly. So being in the postgraduate kind of reflective period that I am, I would just like to give a quick thank you, like a tremendous thank you out to all of the teachers and outside staff which volunteer their time to these programs. And I can see the benefits that these programs provide to all the students across the board. And I know that um, your, your time that you put in is great. Speaking from someone who's been on mock trial, we'd be there from 6 to 9.30 at night and even outside on weekdays and whatnot. So just, again, thank you so much to all the teachers and the outside staff because... Now we're moving on to item 5C, retirees. First, we are going to honor Barbara Cummings. She is here, and oh. there are some administrators coming forward. To speak. Great.
Kelly and I um, both know Barbara well enough that we were pretty confident that if we didn't drag her up here, so she had to stand there, that she might try to escape out the back, the back entrance because she doesn't like the recognition, she doesn't like the attention, she just likes to do her job and and contribute to the Cape Elizabeth School community as she has so ably for the last many years. Um, so I'll just really quickly read. Um, Barbara has been a consummate professional in many different roles in the Cape Elizabeth schools. Um, I believe it's correct. She's worked in all three schools um, and she's also worked in community services. So she knows the school system probably better than any other individual um, who is currently working for it. Um, in every capacity, Barbara has brought her salt of the earth qualities. Um, and that is a phrase that to me just brings it comes to my mind when I think about Barbara. Um, her honesty, her strong work ethic, her dedication, her unflappability, no matter what's going on around her, and her willingness to serve. No matter what her job title, she has been surrogate mother for countless students through the years. She knows countless families and extended families and has credibility with everybody that she comes in contact with. She's listened to them and cared for them and let them know that they're special. She is also one necessary moves students along to other locations um, when that's what they need to gain their independence and their growth, because sometimes that is what's needed, and to learn how to cope on their own. Um, as much as any person with the certificate of teacher, Barbara Cummings has been one of our most effective culture keepers and teachers. Um, Barbara, thank you for all your years of service. Um, you will be greatly, greatly missed. So thank you. So as Jeff has spoken so eloquently of the exponential gifts that Barbara Cummings has brought to Cape Schools during her long tenure with us, I will add some brief remarks. I first met Barbara a long time ago, so know her gifts quite well. When my very first year teaching, I taught in Cape High School, had the nursery school, and I had the pleasure of having Barbara's daughter, Alicia, when Alicia was four, and I was 24. And I can state without reservation that Barbara Cummings does not age at all. <laughs> um, I do, she doesn't. And um, I also can state that her caring and kindness for every single person that is lucky enough to be in her orbit has been unwavering. And so she just is, she's, she's a, really a Cape legend. It's, it's extraordinary. And much to Principal Shedd's dismay, when a staffing change uh, transferred Barbara to Pond Cove three years ago, it was to Pond Cove's utter euphoria. And Barbara is often the very first face that everyone sees in the morning. And she greets children and adults with the biggest smile, the warmest welcome. And very often you hear, overhear her when she's calling parents at home who may have forgotten to call in or she's checking up on someone. and and. I know them by heart. She'll say, um, hi, Mike. This is Barb from school. Um, calling to check on Sally. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope she feels better. I mean, it's really with right from the heart. And she, um, it's, it's extraordinary. We also, as you know, have another Barbara in the office. So we affectionately call them our two Barbs. And one of um, this Barbara's neighbor is a kindergartner. And at the beginning of the year, um, had a little... Um, little trouble articulating his R's. And so each day he would go, he would leave and he'd say, bye, Babwa, bye, the other Babwa, okay? And it was just a really sweet way to end the day. Um, Barb, you are truly emblematic of the heart and soul of Cape Schools, and it has been a gift to come full circle with you and each of us at Pond Cove, and I speak for, for everybody, wish you the very, very best um, on your very well-deserved retirement, and we hope that you will come back and visit us often. We promise not to give you any more POs to process, and um, promise just to take good care of you as, as much as you have taken such good care of all of the children, staff, and families uh, in Cape. So thank you so much. It's been <laughs> One more moment, please. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
shall I step in for you? I believe next we are recognizing Lynn Spadinger. So I simply cannot say enough wonderful things about Lynn Spadinger as well. And I have known Lynn for almost as long as I have known Barbara Cummings. I also had her child um, when I was a teacher. I had her son, Joel, when I was a first grade teacher at Pond Cove. And for Lynn has been, a, she was a classroom volunteer at the time. She also, I got to know her as a staunch, staunch advocate for children. And a few years later, she became a teacher herself. So as a parent, she was a staunch advocate, and she has remained true to those advocacy strengths all along on behalf of always keeping what's best for children in, their, in, in, in her heart and also um, what is best for them. She has been an extraordinary educator whom Pong Cove has been blessed to have as a second grade teacher for 12 years. Her love for teaching children is palpable the moment you walk into her classroom, and with its vibrant learning environment filled with authentic projects, artifacts, everything that children have done that really showcases their learning. And I would say one of the most striking features of Lynn is when she's speaking about her students and when she's, she's showing you some, she's sharing something that they've made. She, is, she speaks with such pride and affection and admiration. It, and she often tears up. And um, it, but it's, it's truly from the heart, so she's, she's just so excited to share these things, and this is, it's just emblematic of who she is. And she really, I would say, really highlights students' passion and their growth, and that's, that's one, of the, one of the pieces that has really um, struck me um, when working with her. Lynn, we will miss you so much at Pond Cove, but know that you have two grandchildren who will reap the benefits of having you much more to themselves than they have had for well, ever, actually. Um, so you've made Pond Cove a better place, and we wish you nothing but more than a happy, healthy, and well-deserved retirement. And please come back and visit us a lot. As you know, we might have an opening for a substitute teacher, um, too. <laughs> um, but we just wish you everything and can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us. It's been a pleasure knowing you for as long as I have. So. a donation on your behalf to the Fort Williams Park Boat Foundation's uh, Children's Garden. Um, we give you our sincere gratitude and our thanks for the mark that you made. Thank you. <laughs> and next, Principal Tracy is coming forward to recognize retiree Sally Tamaro, who is right beside him. Good evening and thank you. It's my pleasure to speak about Sally Tamaro as we honor her tonight and celebrate her 22-year career and her retirement from the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Sally started working in the guidance office for her first five years in the middle school and then moved to the main office where she's worked ever since. Um, for 12 of her 17 years while in her main office role, Sally also taught a keyboarding class to sixth graders. Sally served on the board of the Cape Elizabeth Education Association, effectively representing the administrative assistants for close to a decade. I'm very glad that I have the opportunity to be able to speak about Sally, even though I've only worked with her for, for three years um, of her 22-year of her career in the Cape School Department. Um, the, the partnership between an administrator and an administrative assistant is a very important relationship and one that requires trust and confidence and constant communication. Having Sally in this role has made for a very enjoyable collaboration and I've benefited tremendously from her skills and her wisdom. She is highly organized, collaborative, and conducts herself with the utmost professionalism. I have enjoyed her sense of humor, 
her keeping me on track, her asking me, how are you going to pay for that? And most importantly, for her unwavering loyalty and support in my role as the principal. I consider her to be a confidant and a friend. And on behalf of the entire middle school community, we wish her the very best as she begins her well-deserved retirement. Enjoy, Sally. <laughs> Great appreciation for everything you have done and the mark you've made on this district. Thank you. Thank you. Not with us tonight is uh, high school retiree Richard Roethlisberger, but Principal Shedd, I believe, is going to just speak briefly um, to honor his service as well. So I'll just, I will speak very briefly, but I, I think it's important for the board to hear a few points about uh, Richard. For me, which is what everybody knows him as. Um, he's not Mr. Roethlisberger, he's Richard to all of his students, all of his staff and everybody else. And it's a sign of his authentic relationship that he has with kids. Um, I think what occurred to me as I was sitting there is that we always tell students to be themselves um, there was a, I think it was, it's either Ralph Waldo Emerson or Plato or one of those guys who said, know thyself, or maybe it was Socrates. Somebody really brighter than me said, know thyself. And there is nobody who comes closer to that ideal that I've ever experienced than Richard. He, 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 know, he, he is himself and he knows himself and he opens himself to kids um, and he demands um, excellence from students in terms of their art. The level of rigor he maintains is very high, and he just develops these authentic, respectful relationships that you cannot scale up. Um, it is just a very human quality that he brings to his classes. Um, and quite simply, he is one of the best teachers I have ever had the privilege to watch work. Um, and I would say that one of the strengths of Cape Elizabeth High School is, is, that, is the culture of respect and caring that it has. Um, and I would say that Richard is, has been for quite a few years one of the flame keepers of those qualities and his loss is a real loss to the school district. He's just unbelievable. So, thank you. At this time, we're going to have a brief intermission to have a little reception to honor our retirees.
So moving on to item 5D, strategic plan indicators of success with metrics. So we're not going to spend much time on this because the board um, tackled that in its workshop in May, um, but included in your packet was some information about the metrics. Just as a reminder, some of that um, achievement data isn't available because it's fall to fall data, or we don't have yet, yet have the results of our state assessment. So I can't really update you on that piece. We've spoken about um, the survey data. Uh, let's see. Not a whole lot to update, but we wanted to make sure that you had the most current version of the data included in your packet, and that is also available to the public. Great. Thank you. Uh, moving on to superintendent's report. Sorry. Okay. Right. <laughs> Rush me all of a sudden. Superintendent's uh, <laughs> Thank report. you. <laughs> okay. So Montana mentioned um, a few of the end of year pieces happening at the high school. Um, one of the pieces that um, wasn't mentioned, she mentioned SDP projects, which all of our seniors participate in, the senior transition projects, and students report out on those and showcase those to um, a panel of folks. And as she indicated, there are a wide variety of things that students are involved in. Um, also, we had our students um, involved in the student-driven learning projects do their presentations, um, public presentations, last week at some point, I think. Um, and again, a wide variety of projects um, exhibited there as well, including um, this is just one that I'm still absorbing, um, but one of our students, um, Dylan Crovo, who original project was to design a quadcopter in order to run the software to design the quadcopter, had to build his own computer. So he built a water-cooled um, computer, which he told me anyone could do in a couple of hours if you just follow the directions. So. Good news for all of you here tonight and watching at home. You too can learn how to build a water-cooled computer. Um, contact Dylan if you need some support. But one of the great pieces about his project, and I heard this from, um, I'll share one other story. One of the great pieces about Dylan, he's going to um, school next year in Boston Wentworth Institute of Technology. But he said that he's planning to come back to mentor um, a student who's working on a solar-based project for next year's student-driven learning. So um, already giving back to his community. And, and I think as we saw um, in our students this evening, there's a lot of that that happens here. And um, you know, Montana acknowledged the support of all the adults who work as coaches and volunteers with our programs. I think we also need to acknowledge all of our parents who put in those long hours of transporting their children back and forth and greeting them at those late hours and um, getting them out of bed on those snow days to go off to <laughs> competitions and early Saturday morning speech tournaments. It's, a, it's definitely a family and community effort. Um, the one other project that I wanted to mention, one young woman um, did a project about education, but she was speaking about her experience and at the beginning she was just very anxious about how was she going to do this, what, what was it supposed to look like, how did she fit this in with everything else she was juggling and said that the, one of the greatest takeaways um, for her beyond all of the pieces that she learned about education and sort of different pathways that she's interested in was the fact that she realized that she doesn't really need to be stressed out about things. Um, and so, again, I, I think one of those pieces that you can't embed into a curriculum, but as part of the learning that occurs for our students and the many um, opportunities they have in the district. So, congratulations to them as well. Let's see. Uh, also included in your packet was a letter from the state acknowledging approval of our PEPG, our Educator Evaluation um, and Administrator Evaluation System. Enrollment, our current enrollment is included in your report. And just to acknowledge, I had shared with the board after our last meeting that we've been keeping an eye on enrollment at the middle school. Um, those numbers are continuing <laughs> to climb a little bit. We're about 11 students, I think, right now um, in our projections above where we projected during budget season that we might be. So we're continuing to keep an eye on those numbers across grade levels and um, super. <laughs> Superintendent Coulter, when he is here, will work with Principal Tracy to monitor that and keep you informed if there's any need for additional staffing. Um, included in your packet as well was the volunteer report. Um, again, John Holdridge put that together for you. He's not here this evening, but um, summarizes all of the work that our volunteers 
um, do for us and with our students, including some of the work that our students themselves do in volunteering as mentors and um, buddies for, for classes in different grade levels. In music news, this is hot off the presses, yesterday afternoon, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six students um, from the middle school who have been accepted into the Portland Youth Wind Ensemble, which is part of the USM Youth Ensembles, and um, students are not usually accepted at the end of their eighth grade year, so I just want to acknowledge Charlotte Thayer, Sydney McFarland, Jack Bassett, Maximo Kesselhout, Kesselhout, Ben Payson, and Jack Sands, who have been um, selected for participation in that ensemble, and kudos to Caitlin Ramsey, their music educator, um, for her support of them as well. Let's see. Oh, Starwink School. That was the last one on my list. So you may remember that we submitted a proposal to the town council at their request back in the fall, October, November, somewhere in that vicinity. A um, couple of board members are serving on a committee, um, working with the town council, a joint committee, to um, take another look at that process. So requests for proposals went out a week or so ago. Those are due back on June 24th. So folks here are working on kind of refreshing our proposal to meet the um, new specifications and requests that were brought forward in that process. So that will be submitted and shared with you. And then I guess as this is my last meeting, I just want to thank the board and the community and the faculty and parents and kids for um, the support and the great privilege to have served you over the last five years. I look forward to new adventures, but... I'm, I'm available if you need me. You can send me an email, just send a phone call if there's anything I can do to offer your continued support. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 6A. May I have a motion, please? <clears throat> I move that we approve the superintendent's nominations of noon personnel for the 2016-2017 school year as follows. High School Visual Arts at a .7 FTE, Jana Dewan. Elementary Teacher for Kindergarten, Kaylee Gallant. Elementary Teacher for Grade 1, Karen Jennings. Elementary Teacher for Grade 3, Katherine Zellers. And Elementary Teacher for Grade 3, Julie Merriam. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6B, may I have a motion, please? <clears throat> I move we grant Superintendent Coulter the authority to hire school personnel, excluding administrative positions, which will require board approval during the summer of 2016. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6C, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following 2016-2017 athletic, administrative, and co-curricular personnel nominations as outlined in item 6C, pages 2, 3, 4, and 5 in our packet this evening. A second. Any discussion? I would just like to say that there seems to be a theme this evening at the enormous lift it takes throughout our district in order to raise the achievement level of our children and provide them with every opportunity for our students to succeed in their heart's desire. And the results are clear, that these are well-spent funds and the personnel and teachers and outside community members who step up to take these positions contribute an enormous amount to our community. And I'd just like to thank them all for stepping up. I know that this is often not done for the money. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to echo that, Joanna, that I, too, appreciate the enormous interest. I was talking about that earlier with Montana, that without folks stepping forward like that, and while we try to pay what we can, it doesn't begin to touch the hours and the thoughtful time they put into this work. So huge thank you to all of them as well. 
I echo those sentiments. A huge thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6D. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve or action pursuant to section 1485-4 of Title 20A that the superintendent of schools be authorized after the close of the fiscal year in order to address audit related adjustments that may be needed to transfer not more than 5% of the total appropriation for any cost center in the current fiscal year operating budget to another cost center or among other cost centers provided that the total current fiscal year operating budget shall not be increased by such transfers. Mm -hmm. A second. Discussion? A little explanation. <laughs> so just a clarification. <laughs> Our little help this is here. Andrew, Catherine Messner is going to come up and fill you in. I figured you'd need a little explanation. I was going to sit closer to the podium, but it was full when I got here. <laughs> so what that article is, it's asking, um, it's getting your approval, because by law you do have to vote on this, um, for us to transfer between cat its cost centers, categories, every month. I went my financial report, the first page that you see is the cost center slash categories. And um, I requested this vote because right now we look in good shape. The only category that we may have to transfer to into is transportation, but I think, um, I still think we'll be fine. But there are times when the auditor comes that they point out something or request a change that causes an, one of those categories to be overexpended, and you can't have that. So, but you can transfer up to 5% from any of the other categories slash cost centers. So this, and you have to get approval from the school board by law. So this gives us approval to do it. Um, and that way we don't have to bother you in the summer when the auditor finally gets here and does their thing. So that's, that's what it is. Yes, Joe. Quick question. It's 5% of what? What is your It's It's 5% of the category's budget. You can only transfer out 5% of that category. You can transfer as much as you want into each category, but you can only transfer out the budgeted amount for each individual, like, like transportation. Mm -hmm. um, I can only transfer out 5% of the budgeted amount, but we can transfer as much in as we need. That's how that works from various other cost centers. Yeah, category cost centers. If you look through the laws, they're spoken of both ways. Okay. So that's well, that makes it confusing too. We present them as categories typically in our budget. So yes. If you're referring to that. Yes, Thank you. I'm referring to that, same thing. So just to briefly clarify for those who are watching, the state requires a budget in a certain format yes. that dictates certain categories. When yes. we vote on the budget, that's, those are the categories that are defined. Yeah. And as we reach the end of the year, the balances may be a little higher or low based upon the budget. So we are approving a process whereby we can transfer the allowed monies out in advance of yes. having to do that at the end of the year. Yes, exactly. Great. Well done. <laughs> Probably better than what I was saying. So. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? All right. Item seven, committee reports. I'll just report that our June 6th policy committee meeting was postponed. We decided that it would be a better use of everyone's time to meet in a more informal roundtable discussion to really talk about this policy of receipt of gifts and grants and to invite some of our granting organizations such as CEIF and parents associations to join us for discussion so that we can reach better clarity and understanding about each other's goals and come to some better consensus about how the board can move forward on those. So we'll look forward to announcing a date and inviting leadership from those organizations sometime in July. Thank you. 
So briefly, the Spur Wing School uh, reuse building, building reuse committee We've met a couple of times. We are, are now have a um, request for proposal out currently, which is more than just ideas for what it can be used for. It tries to get more specificity so that we can begin to evaluate what may be there. So if people have ideas, if they want to add specificity, I would encourage anyone to go to the town website, look at the form, fill it out and send it in. They're due by uh, the 24th of June. Great. Yeah. Committee. <laughs> okay. okay, any other committee? Um, item number eight, school board agenda requests. I would like to remind the public that this is the um, final business meeting of the school year. The school board uh, typically meets again at the end of October with a special business meeting. Uh, did I say? <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I tried to sneak that one in. August. Um, but if you have agenda requests, they can come to the office of the superintendent, to the school board. Um, they don't have to come in this format right here. Um, email is a great way to do that, and those are listed on the district website. Item 9, announcement of upcoming meetings. We won't have any actually till September probably other than mm -hmm. that round table which mm -hmm. won't be a policy committee meeting right. but we'll publicize it appropriately okay and thank you for your service on that committee when and where library yes thank you and before we adjourn um, I would like to extend my deep gratitude and on behalf of the board but on behalf of myself and my family to you Meredith um, to the service to this district and what you have brought to us um, you have made an indelible mark here and we will not forget you we thank you so much and we wish you all the best in your new adventure and you're not too far away <laughs> and that's a kind of a threat. You're not too far away. <laughs> I can find you. Um, I don't know if anybody else on the board would like to say a few words. I just want to say thanks, Meredith. Also, um, it's been a, a real uh, gift for me to my first time ever on a school board having you as the superintendent. And your passion and your intelligence and um, your dedication is inspiring to everybody, I would think, in any, any point. And um, something we haven't seen in a while. And we'll miss you and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah. On behalf of the board, oh, I thought we were going to move quickly to the motion to adjourn. <laughs> that's okay. yeah, no, that's okay. I just wanted to also echo what I've also put on the card so that you can hopefully take my words and frame them somewhere. But, you know, it's not a matter of where we are today, but how far we've come as a district. The amazing work that you have done with building the foundation on which we will continue to work on for years to come will not be soon forgotten. So thank you so much for all that heavy lifting. Much appreciated. I'm okay. We wrote notes. <laughs> On behalf of the board, we have uh, they're sending me out to see. <laughs> <laughs> At sunset. At sunset. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. And we hope that you will remember some because we will remember you that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, on your final business meeting here with us, may I have a motion for item number 10, please? I move that we adjourn. A second. All those in favor? Thank you.